Hi ladies and gents, my name is Tom Gibson. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about why Loom is my favorite screen recorder. Maybe not even a screen recorder, maybe just your regular camera that you can use to make videos for your students during remote teaching. A couple reasons I like Loom over some of the other screen recorders is the editing feature. Usually you can only trim off the front or the back of the video that you recorded, but Loom actually lets you go in and take out little pieces of the video. Maybe if you pause for a really long time while you're trying to pull up another window or something like that. I also love that you can not only record your screen and your camera, but the camera on you is inside a cool circular icon. Usually it's a rectangle. I don't know. Circular just looks better. I feel I love that there isn't a loom watermark on your video. And I love that as soon as you're done recording your video, you automatically have a link ready to share that you can password protect if you would like. So in this video, I wanna walk you through how to record your very first video using Loom and some of the different ways on how to make your video awesome. Go to loom.com and then up here, you will click on sign in. I'm going to sign in with an account that I have not used before so you can kind of see what that first time process will be. Agree to the privacy matters that you probably are not going to read. And then you can say that you are a teacher and then they're gonna ask you if you wanna download the desktop app or the Chrome extension. I like the Chrome extension a little bit better. It ends up being up here. I already have it there, and so it's currently installed. Um, it's just a little more accessible if I'm just wanting to record something um, from my from my desktop or from my uh, browser. Um, but if you wanna install the, the desktop app, you can do that. To get the extension, just click right here where it says install the extension. You have to be using Google Chrome to be doing that. Uh, and then you can follow the directions there. And then it'll likely probably not show up on this extensions bar for you, but you might have to click on this little, this little extensions puzzle piece, and then you'll see it here. Um, but I moved mine out here, so it's a little bit easier. You can move any of them out to the front by clicking on the little pin next to it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click with the currently installed Groom, Chrome extension click continue and now I want to record a video I could go to loom.com and then go to my videos but let me pull up a slideshow that I'm going to use as my example so I've got this slideshow on the distributive property again I can go to loom.com but the great thing about having the extension is if I want to start recording I don't even have to have this open I'm gonna close that out I'm gonna click on the Chrome extension right there where it says loom for Chrome and then I get a few different options here so let's start actually let's start on the top right over here if I want to record my screen and my camera which is just the built-in camera right now on the uh, on my MacBook Pro um, I'm gonna click right there there. If I just want to do my screen, I can click there um, and then it'll just be, it won't be my actual video. I recommend screen and cam though because it's great for the students to see your face as you're teaching them. Um, a little bit more personalization. Um, but if you want to just do the camera only, it's not going to make this full screen while you record it. But when you do record it, it's going to just be this camera. You're, they're not going to see your computer screen. So this makes a great way if you just want to do something where you're talking to the students and you don't have anything on your computer screen, you can just do camera only and, and it's, it works out great. So for this example, I'm going to do screen and camera um, you may not see these ad advanced options but if you click on show advanced options it'll ask you what camera do you want to use and then it's defaulted right here to my FaceTime HD camera which is the one that's built in um, and then if you want to flip the camera this is like when I move to the right it's like it's actually moving to the right or if I can go that way so you can decide to flip the camera if you end up using like if you end up holding something up to the camera where the students have to read it um, you'll you want to uncheck that so that way it's not backwards but this way if I move left it kind of mirrors me in the image right there um, like it would when you're looking at your your phone um, with your microphone just use the uh, you can use the different microphone if you, you probably only have your default microphone I've got a few different microphones so I'll just keep it on the default internal one and I am now going to say I want to record my full desktop which is just everything you see on this screen you've got a couple more options down here you can make a very small circle you can make a medium circle or you can make a large circle I would say that if you've got a smaller computer screen uh, maybe like a MacBook Air that you would maybe do like a small or a medium um, because it, it, you don't want it to take up too much of your computer screen but if you have a very large computer monitor that you're recording especially if you have maybe an external monitor that's like 18 or 24 inches you can actually make it a little bit larger because it's not going to be taking up as much of your screen so for the most part 
start, the medium one will work out pretty well for most people. And then whenever you want to actually start recording, you can actually click this play button or you can click on start recording over here. So let's take a look. Do you want to share your entire screen? I do. That's a little bit easier that way. But if I want to just pick the actual uh, application, like just Google Chrome, even if I switch to something else, only record Google Chrome. That's what you have that option there for. I'm just going to record my entire screen though. Click on it and click share. And then it's just okay. You got the countdown. Hi students, welcome to this lesson. Let's get started on the distributive property. And then you can go ahead and click present even if you've got a slideshow and it will present and keep you in the bottom left. You can actually move this around too, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you can go through and go through the slideshow um, while you're explaining things. A little tip, don't just look at the screen like I'm doing right now. Look at the camera when you are when you get a chance as often as you can because it actually simulates eye contact with the students. So let's say I'm done now and I can click on finish the recording. And it has already now made a link to my Loom video. And so you can watch a little uh, uh, editing thing, but I can show you a few things. And you can actually see it right now. Let's take a look. Hi students, welcome to this lesson. Let's get started on the distributive property. Then you can go ahead and click present. Even if you've got you can move it to the middle. Too, which is pretty cool. Even as you um, move it, you can move it as you see. I can move that circle while I'm recording and then it, if I need to like move it out of the way during the recording. So uh, a couple things that you can do if you don't wanna do anything or edit anything and you like it the way it is, you have already got a link that you can share with students. Maybe you put it uh, on your class website or you email it to students um, or put it on Google Classroom, whatever you are using. If you want to add a password to this video, if this is uh, maybe you're creating videos for younger students um, and you wanna make sure that it's just secure and only the, the people with the students with the link and the password can view the video, you can click on add password there and then say what the password's gonna be. Um, or you could say link sharing or public. Link sharing is probably the best way to go. Only people that can see it is people that have your link. Otherwise, this video could show up in Google results um, if you want more people to see it. Um, a couple things you can do if you wanna change your title. Uh, you can just click there and say distributive property. It took the title of, my, uh, of this little window that was open, so that's why I said that already. Um, if you want to like download this onto your computer so that maybe maybe you don't want to just share a link to the Loom page, but you want to put it on your YouTube channel um, or upload it to another platform um, like Edpuzzle, you'll have to download the video to do that. And then it'll say, okay, where do you want to download it? You can say, I want to put it on my desktop distributive property video. And then I can click save. And then it downloads that as a video showing the finder. That's now a video on my computer that I can now upload anywhere else that I want um, if I don't want to just uh, share a Loom link uh, with students. And a couple other things you can do under settings, you can, you can change these if you would like. Um, I won't go into them. Some of them are a little self-explanatory. Um, and then if you want to trim, maybe you want to take out a certain section of your video. Um, I can go here. Uh, let's say I'm going to present even if you've got a slide to this lesson. Let's get started on the distributive property. Let's say I want to erase the part where I, I, I'm actually talking to you guys in this video where I said it. Now you can actually click on present and watch it. I'm going to say start trimming. Okay, so this red stuff is what's going to, what it's going to take out. You can go ahead and click present even if you've got a slideshow and it will present and keep you in the bottom left. You can actually move this around. Okay. Too, so you can see that this is where it's at right now in the video, and then this is how much of the video I'm gonna take out. Um, and so let's say I wanna pick it up right where I go into the distributive property. Um, and then you can go through and go So let's say I wanted to keep there. So I wanna cut out all of this stuff right here. You can even be a little bit more fine tuning with this. And you can go ahead and click present even if you've got a slideshow and it will present and keep you in the bottom left. So this is showing you, you what will be removed. Too, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you can go through. And, and you can see how it went past there. So I am going to click on remove and if there are any other things that I want to trim, maybe there's a, a, a section at the end that I want to trim, I can click on start trimming again and then say, okay, I want to take out this little bit. 
There we go. So let's say I'm done as we can because it actually simulates eye contact with the students. There we so go. let's. There we go. So now I've got this section I'm taking out and this section that I'm taking out. I'm going to now click on Remove Publish Changes. And it might take a few seconds depending on how much you're taking out and how many different sections you're taking out. Now when I come back to it, let's see those sections taken out. Hi students, welcome to this lesson. Let's get started on the distributive property. Um, and then you can go through. So you can see it took out that little section of it. So if you wanna share the link with your students straight from here, you can copy that. And then when you, they open it up, this is what they will see. And they can even leave comments on here. Again, you can, if you remember, there were some extra settings that you could turn off those comments. They could watch it at different speeds. Um, they don't even have to have an account to do this. And if they wanted to download it themselves, they could do that. And that's how you can record a video on Loom. Let me know if you give it a shot or what other questions you have about making videos with Loom. I am doing trainings and workshops for teachers and schools and districts on how to create better videos for remote teaching without being a video pro. So feel free to reach out to me at tom at tomgibson.com if you would like for me to come to your school and provide training for your teachers on how to do this better. That being said, my name is Tom Gibson. I hope you learned something today that'll help you create more meaningful and memorable experiences for your students, even if you are teaching remotely. Thanks so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.